Councillor Zondervan, can you hear me? Yes, it is very faint, however. Businesses or? Everett's Wells. Oh, cool. Yeah. It's funny, I'm in, I'm in the, the athletic circus business, and we do a lot of work in schools, and 
I'm getting a lot of calls from schools that are gonna, they're now going to be closed and they want their work done now instead of in the summer, which is great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably I think not. you want some of something. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's a scary thought. <laughs> you have a quorum? Good evening. A quorum of the government operations and what's the other word? Rules, thank you. And claims committee being present and the meeting the time of the meeting have arrived I will call this meeting to order we have with us present this evening Councilor Sobrino Wheeler Councilor Toomey Councilor Simmons <laughs> Councilor McGovern I'm just making a joke here Councilor Carlone and up here I have Neil Alpert aide to city councilor and our city clerk Anthony Wilson also joining us is Miss Patty Councilor Patty Nolan we do have um Participating in our remote manner, our Councilor Zondervan, and I will read the regulations as pertains to remote participation. The city manager has authorized the use of remote participation at meetings of the city's public bodies and transmitted it to, to the council on May 13, 2012, the open meeting law regulations, which were revised by the attorney general on October 6, 2070. It is 940 CMR 29. Point 10 to be used as the guidelines for the city's use of remote participation. The chair recognizes the absence of the person that is not at the meeting. Also announced that there is a quorum present, which there is. The, the chair also will announce that, the, that there will be a member that is not meeting and will be participating remotely. That member that is not present is Councilor Zondervan who will be participating in the meeting remotely and is in attendance by, me, by way of teleconferencing. This information must be recorded in the minutes. The chair requests that the absent counselor to state for the record that the proceedings are clearly audible to him. And so I will ask Councilor Zondervan, are we audible clearly to you? Yes, Madam Chair, thank you. Thank you. The chair will announce that Councilor Zondervan is audible to the meeting and both to the city council and to the public, at which point the chair will announce that all votes that will be taken this evening will be done uh, by roll call vote. The call is as follows. The Government Operations Rules and Claims Committee will meet to continue discussion on extending the contract to City Manager Louis A. Disquale beyond January 2020. Good evening. I want to thank everyone for coming this evening to the meeting of the Government Ops Rules and Claims Committee. The call of the meeting is as follows, that the Government Operations Rules and Claims Committee will meet to continue discussion on extending the contract of City Manager Louis A. Pasquale beyond January 2020. I want to note that as the city continues to grapple with the the COVID-19 outbreak. We are modifying how we do many things in the hopes that we can minimize the risk of the exposure to those presents. We are not holding this committee in the typical round table setup, instead having council sit at their regular desk, uh, and, um, sitting at their regular desk as far as part as possible. So if you folks that are sitting on this side of the room want to make more room between one another as we have been asked to do, Please do so, you will see that on this side of the room we were able to manage that. We are also providing public comment at the top of the meeting. And I strongly, first I wanna thank all of you that have come to participate in public com comment. But as we close, or as you have given your testimony, I'm gonna strongly urge those of you that have come to give public comment, uh, please feel comfortable to leave after you made that that made your public comment or left your minutes your your notes um, so that you know that this meeting is being televised and being recorded is also being privately uh, being recorded by other devices through the media and other individuals so please be aware of that everyone will have an opportunity to, to view this meeting online um, if 
live streaming or at a later time. Additionally, with every council meeting and committee hearing, people are welcome to submit their public comments via email and they will be a part and that will be made part of the record. I am also urging my colleagues on the committee to keep their remarks brief and to the point. If you wish to ask numerous questions or make a, nu or a numerous level of points, I would ask that you state so, so that they will be on the record, but to consider having those questions answered uh, in writing at the next meeting. I think it's best until we get a clearer grip on the virus to keep our meetings brief and as to the point as we can, and that is certainly my intention this evening. Again, I want to note that my colleague, Council Zondran, is particip participating remotely by phone this evening. So having said that, I am going to open the floor for public comment. I think we have a sign-in sheet, which our clerk will get. The time allotted to each individual is three minutes. Please give your name and address for the record. Make all your comments through the chair, after which you are free and or encouraged to uh, leave so that we are always keeping your health and safety in mind. So with that, when the clerk brings the sign sheet forward, we will then start with public comment. Okay, our first person that has signed up to speak is Elaine Thorne, followed by Ruth Ryan Allen. I'm sure I'm too shy for this, but. <laughs> um, hello, I'm Elaine Thorne. I'm at 40 Hay Street in Cambridge. I'm here to talk about being in support of the current city manager, Louis De Pasquale. I have worked with Louis for the past 30 years um, in different capacities here in the city most currently um, with the Affordable Housing Trust. And I think that he is doing a great job. He is an open policy door. Um, I've worked to see that this city has supplied affordable housing much more so than any place I know. Um, and we continue to try to do better all the time. I also worked with Louis during one of the um, more trying times in Cambridge during the large fire that we had. Um, Louis did everything possible to make um, that transition for people who were affected by the fire um, as seamless as possible and worked diligently at, with other city departments to make all of that happen. Um, he has an open door policy. We have maintained the uh, bond rating and I just feel like this is the right person for the job currently and I hope that you all will support it. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Ruth Ryan Allen, followed by Susan Ruff. After that, Mike Nicoloro. Thank you. I'm here in support of extension of um, Mr. De Pasquale's contract. My name is Ruth Ryan Allen. I live on 48 Fano Street. I've been a member of the planning and focus group for the new inclusionary park being developed and built by the Danahee Park Space. I'm also on the board of the Cambridge CPAC, the Special Education Parent Advisory Committee. This park is so important to our city, the children, the families with all abilities. And I was never so proud to be invited as a member of the group. Our city manager, Louie, decided to put this idea into a reality for our families. There is such a need for parks where both children with different abilities as well as parents with different abilities can go and just enjoy a day in the park. Most of the time these children have to wait for one of the specialized swings to become available in order to even be a part of the experience. Parents who have, might have a physical disability have to stand there and watch their children play. But this is going to change. Mr. De Pasquale saw a need in our city. He heard our families who are quiet. And, and at times, they don't make much noise. He has the pulse on the heart of the city. He put together a team of parents whose children range in abilities, outside caregivers, city staff, inclusionary specialists, art council members who can incorporate artists who them themselves have different abilities. 
and an architectural firm who has an excellent experience with such projects. The outreach groups that were formed were coordinated and open to all ideas. He was beyond sensitive to all groups and opened the process to all of the neighbors in Cambridge. He gave us his word that this would be done and it will be done. Now, Mr. DePasquale managed to get the funding, responded back to the group, putting his top aides in the mix. Many other department heads followed him because he is a man to be followed. This is a united effort and it was led by him. The most vul vulnerable in our city are sometimes drowned out by our big plans. But Mr. DePasquale ensures all will be heard. I am eternally grateful to have such a manager in our city. This park will be a reality very soon. The children and adults will find refuge in our turbulent times due to being able to access, access such a facility. This is due to a great project, a great plan, and a great leader. And if we lose him, we'll be a, Cambridge will be much less. So I urge you to follow the extension on this. Thank you so much for your commentary. Your next person is Susan Ruff followed by Mike Nicoloro, followed by Scott Slater. Hello, I'm Susan Ruff. I live at 80 Fawcett Street. Um, I've known Louie for 20 plus years, but I'm also the director of Cambridge Youth Soccer, so I've been working with him in his role as city manager, and I fully support extending his contract for another two years. Um, Louis has a passion for this city, and it's been great working with him on various youth programs that our city provides. Uh, we sit down sometimes over complicated issues. I have to say he always has great respect for everybody sitting at that table and invites all points of views and then we try to work out a good solution for people. And uh, he understands youth programs, not just youth soccer, and we really appreciate that. It, in addition, his dedication to affordable housing certainly helps many of our soccer families. So thank you for that. Thanks for your time. And thank you for your testimony. Mike Nicoloro, followed by Scott Slater, and then James Teague. Hey, good evening. Uh, my name is Mike Nicoloro. I'm a lifelong resident of uh, East Cambridge, 156 Spring Street. And I am in favor of extending the city manager's contract beyond 2021. I've had the privilege of knowing Louis uh, for pretty much my entire life. He grew up a few houses down from where I lived on Thorndike. He was on 7th. Um, I also had an opportunity to actually work with him briefly when he was the budget director and I was with the city. I worked for the water department. And um, both professionally and on a personal basis, I have found Mr. Deepest Quality to be fair passionate in his beliefs, collaborative, honest, and true to his words. Beyond that, he loves Cambridge and cares deeply about its future. He is a smart man, but he's very humble. If you ever have been with him in a meeting or just in a general conversation, he's engaged and easy to speak with. He has no ego. Once again, humble. He is a good communicator. From budget director to city manager, he has had involvement in maintaining AAA bond rating which helps the city fund many programs that other cities and towns envy. Ride through Cambridge, 6.2 square miles. We are building new schools. We have a fantastic school system with programs for helping our children learn regardless of what challenges they may have. They go the extra distance. I know it. I have a grandson that's in that school system. We have a state-of-the-art water purification plant in Fresh Pond, not to mention a wild and natural habitat adjacent to it. Having our water plant stabilizes our water rates. We have world-class public safety, fire and police, the fire department, ISO class one, which keeps insurance rates down. Why? Because in part our fire water infrastructure is superior. Again, public works has, plays a very defining role in that. Just right, right around the street and look at the different colored hydrants. All of those have a significance and a meaning. Our public works serves, uh, you know, provides varied services to go along with low property taxes when compared to surrounding cities and towns. In summary, the city manager has to balance two major areas, fiscal stability, environmental, quality of life, diversity, a number of things. But it's always the money and then the, the, the soft side of the business, which I consider to be the real thing that hits the, hits the ground. 
I do believe Mr. DePasquale has done a spectacular job in maintaining a healthy balance with both and would hope that he can continue to serve the city beyond 2021. And I'm sure he has a lot of sleepless nights thinking about when he's balancing these things because everybody has to compromise. But at the end, we have a wonderful city and I want to keep it that way. And I think if we have Mr. DePasquale in place, we have a good shot at that to introduce some stability in a world right now with a lot of uncertainty. Thank you. And thank you for your testimony. We now have Scott Slater followed by James Teague, after which we have our former state representative and city councilor, Sandra Graham. Mr. Slater. Thank you. Hi. I live at number 10 Bigelow Street, so right around the corner. And I've known Louis for about 25 years in many different capacities. One thing that's really doesn't get talked about very much is how wonderful the city of Cambridge is, especially in the last five years or so, at responding to little needs of its citizens, such as having a motorcycle that's been chained to a pole outside of your house for a month, or having some handicap placards put on a handicap pole in front of your house that bicycles were always locked on, or having street light fixed, et cetera, et cetera. All the little things that are very important to the citizens of Cambridge. Um, to make just our day-to-day -day life easier. And Louis and the people that work in the city manager's office have always been incredibly responsive. It's, it's so impressive. Friends of mine who are visiting me from out of town can never believe how quickly things are addressed when you make that call. Um, as a res I've lived on Bigelow Street for it will be 30 years next month. And most of my neighbors are older than even me and are on fixed incomes of some sort, have lived in their houses for 30 or 40 years, aren't especially wealthy, want to stay in their homes. And I, one thing that I really think is a wonderful thing that the city of Cambridge has done is to allow the middle class to stay in Cambridge by keeping property taxes low. And I think Louis has had a great deal to do with that. Um, you don't see when people are running for city council in their campaign literature, oh, one of my goals is to preserve the middle class in Cambridge. I'm afraid you just don't hear that very often from city councilors. Perhaps it is one of their goals, but it's a pretty big goal because a lot of people like myself are keeping the city affordable. My, I do have a tenant in my house who's a student. And we have basically never raised our rent since we moved in. We, we have always kept it low and have always had students living there since we've lived there. Many, some of my neighbors on Bigelow Street still rent rooms because under rent control, they lived in rooming houses, but they decided even after they did not have to do that anymore to continue to rent rooms. And those rooms are like the, my tenants rent well below market. And so it's, the idea of having our taxes go up substantially would be kind of devastating. Um, I collect Social Security now, despite the fact that I still work. And f for the residents of so many parts of Cambridge, all the people who live in their parents' houses or have taken them over, the two and three families, and et cetera, et cetera, it really Mr. helps Mr. the Mr. Slater, class your time has expired. Okay, thank so you very if much. If anybody has their, right, their comments in writing, please leave them in the basket. Uh, and they will be made a part of the record for this tonight's meeting. James Teague, followed by Sandra Graham. Hi, so I'm James Teague. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak. My wife and two sons live at 107 Fairweather Street here in Cambridge. I'm here to talk in support of the city negotiating a good, good faith to extend Louis's contract. Um, here's a couple of brief reasons why we want to support him here. I was recently at the Tobin School community meeting and saw the city manager gathering all the different constituents, stakeholders, and providers to that project together to go over the plans, solicit concerns, get suggestions. My wife and I truly appreciate living in a community that values inclusion and values diversity of those different points of view. And it was wonderful to see 
our city manager making that effort to solicit those points of view. It is not easy. I know it's not easy to have to navigate the different points of view. The debate between the soccer families and the baseball coaches is enough to keep anybody away from that. I truly appreciate that he makes that effort. You all know he's worked for the city for a long time. That kind of experience and institutional knowledge brings to this position a tremendous benefit to this city. Earlier, someone mentioned the fire in East Cambridge. And I think that that experience and institutional knowledge was tremendous in getting the resources to those families, providing the homes, the clothing, the food for those families in need. And I appreciate that we've got a city manager who has that kind of experience. We've got a AAA rating. It is not easy to sustain that. We live in really strange times. And I'm not talking about the coronavirus. I'm talking about a federal government that is that is retaliatory against cities, sanctuary cities such as ours. And I appreciate that we've got a city manager who has the skill and the knowledge and the ability and the experience to navigate those financial challenges, those community needs, and just and the political challenges that we're facing. And so I am supportive and I encourage that the city negotiate in good faith to extend his contract. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Sandra Graham. Absolutely. Thank you. Richard Vendetti, followed by David Oshler. Altshuler. Good evening, councilors. I'm here to, um, to support the extension, and hopefully it's double the time that you have for an extension. I've known Louie for probably 55 years, roughly. Um, I live at 24 Winter Street, East Cambridge. Um, to have a gentleman like Lou get involved with this city and the love he has for this city, the love he has for, for children and sports and how he's helped out over the years, you can't get a better person in life. And to have him run this city, to be one of the top-notch cities in the country, um, with the AAA bond rating, and he keeps it up year after year after year. So I hope you um, extend this here for a, a long time. I know everybody in this room and in the city who knows him would appreciate, would appreciate it for sure. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. David Altshuler, followed by Douglas Altshuler, followed by Jim Stockard. My name is David Altshuler. I want to start by thanking all of you for your service to the city and to making it the great place that I've been proud to live in for a little over 20 years now. And also thank you for you know, keeping things going in these scary times, having open government and being able to have these hearings. And wherever we go from here, these kinds of you know, democracy and action is just one of those important things. And one of the you know, heroes of mine in this great local setting is Louis de Pasquale, and so I'm here to talk in favor of his extension. I come with a couple of different hats on. One is from sort of business side, and then also from the arts. In terms of business, I'm involved with a couple of different restaurants. I'm involved with a, thing, a restaurant in Emma Square called Olay, and I'm also here for a friend associate of mine, Tom Brush, who operates uh, Felipe's in the middle of Harvard Square. And what Tom, who's not feeling well right now, uh, asked me to convey to all of you is that even though he's had a couple of you know, hiccups in trying to figure out a couple of regulatory things here with the city, where he didn't have the easiest time, he didn't have it, things didn't go the way he wanted them to go. Louis was somebody who dealt with him straightforwardly and with candor and direct, and didn't make it easy. He didn't, didn't get anything, but he, he had to do what he had to do. But just by being straightforward and being transparent and being candor to, uh, it was involved a significant cost financially to, to Tom. That was really important to him. And when you think about what goes on at Harvard Square, and then another hat, um, I've been involved with a theater group that was able to bring, Moon, uh, brought, able to bring Rocky Horror Picture, the show, to uh, Harvard Square this last fall, and was involved in trying to revitalize Kendall Square with arts performances. And so 
we are, again, from be it the restaurant side or from the art side, pure nonprofit, uh, public charity, supported by many people here in Cambridge, is we're trying to revitalize life in Harvard Square and Kendall Square. And in this time where we have all these big corporations and all these big companies, having little independent activities, be it arts groups or be it independent restaurants or just small businesses, it's hard. And Louis, again, while maintaining a fair and level playing field and trying to just make it all work, has been inviting in the Economic Development Group and the Arts uh, Cambridge Group, which, again, I thank you all for the support of those endeavors because you've been behind so much of that. But Louis is somebody who I want to just leave you with one word for Louis, which is I think he is one of the primary catalysts for revitalization. He is someone who is revitalizing these, these two squares, Harvard Square and Kendall Square. And so when I look forward from where we are today in these scary times and think of what trait do I most want to see the leaders of our financial services, our, our administrative bureaucracy, and I mean that in a positive sense, is I want somebody like Louis. He doesn't cut corners. He doesn't you know, do favors. What he does is he just tries to make it straightforward and deal with things with candor. Even, and now back to speaking for Tom, even when things don't work out, knowing that you've got a... An Thank you for your person. testimony. You reach your three minutes. If you have your remarks in writing, please leave them in the basket. So Thank you for the opportunity. The Thank you for your testimony. Douglas Alshuler, followed by Jim Stockard, and then Rob Belkner. Uh, hello. Thank you. Uh, I just am here to support for uh, Louis Di Pasquale for keeping the position of city manager. Um, I can't really speak to his work as city manager, but I actually was in the baseball little league for West Cambridge. And he was the commissioner of that. And, uh, you know, uh, although I was pretty young, I just remember the uh, whole program ran really well. And I remember uh, my mother was a coach. And I remember when I left for a year and I had to come back, he spent extra time to help me figure out which team I needed to go to. Um, and considering that he has such an important job, aside from this uh, work as a commissioner for a Little League Baseball uh, group, I think it's just it shows his character how he's willing to spend so much time to help all these different children have a really uh, great experience together. And yeah, so uh, specifically from my experience, I think he proves that he's willing to put in as much time as he has, plus more, to not only help in his specific job, but then to just be part of the community altogether. And yeah, so uh, thank you for that. And. One little thing is like uh, whatever, like he, I don't think he was even paid for that position as commissioner, but definitely like considering how much work he put in, he should have been. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, but thank you so much. And thank you for your testimony. Jim Stockard followed by Rob Belkner, followed by Kevin Donaher. Hello, my name is Jim Stockard. I live at 141 Oxford Street. Um, I want to uh, acknowledge that I first met Louis as a mortal enemy. He was a coach for the East Cambridge All-Star Little League team, and my son played for the North Cambridge team. So I was started off by being pretty mad at Louie. Uh, but it's actually not a bad way to get to know somebody, to tell you the truth, uh, because as I watched Louie coach, I began to observe some things about him. Every kid on that team, uh, the best kid and the least good kid, got the same kind of attention from Louie. He didn't, there was no status in Louie, it was just a, a, a huge supporter of kids. Um, and on top of that, he was really smart. They played really well, and they won most of their games. And then he went to West Cambridge to run. He still wasn't helping us out in North Cambridge. So uh, I, I, I needed to overcome that as I've gotten to know Louis. Uh, however, on a professional level, he has done a remarkable job for this city. It is inconceivable that you would find a city manager who knew our city better I doubt there's a street in this city he hasn't walked and talked to families on those streets. It's inconceivable that you would find someone who cared more about this city. It's inconceivable that there's somebody with a greater level of integrity than Louis has. Uh, and people have already mentioned the bond rating, which allows us to do so many things because of our ability to raise money. Uh, and finally, as a member of the Affordable Housing Trust Fund, uh, Louis has been a huge supporter of that fund giving us more money and, uh, and, and, and inspiring our staff and our commissioners to think creatively about how we can do the very difficult task of uh, providing more affordable housing for our citizens. So I hope seriously that you will uh, renegotiate with Louis and find a way for him to extend his service to the city. Thanks.
and thank you for your testimony. Rob Beltner, followed by Kevin Donaher. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Um, I'm here in support of the West Cambridge Little League Orioles, which I am one of the uh, assistant uh, coaches because if Louie's not renewed, he's going to be at the field even more than he already is. And we beat him last year. Um, I don't think we could beat him this year if he's there anymore, which would be hard for him to do because he is there so much. I, you know, I, don't, I haven't been to a lot of city manager hearings before, but actually I've never been to any. But to hear Louie discuss in the way that he is by all these uh, folks here, I think that's probably unique for a city, for a city manager position. Um, this city is wonderful. I was uh, born here, uh, moved back here 14 years ago to raise my uh, family here. Uh, my wife and I wanted to grow up in a city that is, is unique and is inclusive and is wonderful. Uh, unique is a word I think that people use a lot. And I think in, in our city's case, it really sticks. I think everybody here, especially you folks here, know that. That's why you're here doing what you do. Thank you for doing what you do. Um, our various universities, our, 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 our social policies, diverse neighborhoods, diverse neighbors, community programs. It's a special place. And to manage a special place like this, you need a special person. And you need somebody who knows the city, who brings the city home with them, brings the city to the baseball fields with them, brings the city back to work with them. We all know Louie does that. Um, Louie loves uh, the people, the culture. Louie's a gentleman to all, whether you're with him or not or negotiating. He's a mentor to many, and I've seen it firsthand, and it's a beautiful thing to watch. He's financially solid. He's a financial, he, he understands financial management. I think we all pretty much understand that. Uh, Louis knows the city, the people, the businesses, the schools, the struggle. Louis is the city. And we have a great opportunity to continue this, this wonderful relationship with a man who loves and knows what he does as well as anybody else. Um, I, I, I would like to say one thing about uh, fiscal responsibility and sustainable growth. I think that you know, Louis understands how to move this city forward without sacrificing its greatest resources, which is its, its, its uh, citizens. And uh, as a, a citizen who, middle class citizen who wants to stay here for as long as possible and uh, continue to raise my family and my, my uh, family's family, I think Louie gives us a Thank great opportunity for that. Thank you for your testimony. Thank you. Again, if it's in writing, please leave it in the basket. Kevin Donaher, after which uh, City Council signed a gram. Hi, my name is Kevin Donaher, and I live at 225 Chestnut Street. I'm here to respectfully ask that you do not renew the contract of City Manager Louis De Pasquale. I first learned about Louis from my work on municipal broadband, where despite the majority of the council claiming to support it, it has been blocked from progressing even to a feasibility study entirely due to the ideological beliefs of a single unelected official. Louis believes that Cambridge should be run like a business. Tax cuts year after year for the wealthy bosses, austerity for the regular people who live and work here. And like every other corporation, Louis has been carrying on the Healy administration's record of discrimination. Councillor Simmons recently remarked, I'm tired of hearing the same type of complaints from the same departments coming from city employees year after year, and also that women feel trapped in a toxic environment. The city council has the power to stop Louis and simply chooses not to. I don't recall any candidate running for city council on a platform of tax cuts, austerity, and discrimination, but that's what we got by continuing the Healy administration. What's the point of holding elections if all the real power in the city is going to be held by the same unelected authority since 1981? Thank you for your testimony. Uh, Council Sandra Graham, followed by Susan Freitas, and then City Council and former Mayor Kevin Kenneth Reeves. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Nice to be here. Been away for a long time, but it's, it's nice to be here tonight. Um, I'm here in really support of Louis. Uh, I have been working with Louis over the past couple of years. Um, he has been accessible. 
And as a city councilor, one thing you really love is a person that returns your phone calls. And you don't have to call him three or four times in order to get him on the telephone. I think he's doing a wonderful job. I think he has provided the quality of life that we look forward to in Cambridge in every neighborhood, not just in one neighborhood, but in every neighborhood. The quality of the parks are always kept up so that the children have places to play without uh, drug paraphernalia all over the place. The schools are getting better. Um, we help design the schools. We design the, the King School. Um, we are grateful that there are, there are buildings of new schools. Uh, I think it, the city has been run very well. I think the city has cash reserves that I would like to get my hands on. But we have it in case of emergency. Our bond rating is very high. And it continues to be high. And that's because you have a city manager that is fiscally responsible for the city. So I'm hoping that you look at his contract and that you say to yourself that this is a man that is qualified to continue to run this city. You know, when I was in the city council, we had a city, we had a nationwide search for a city manager. And we interviewed probably about six or seven people who came from across the country. And as we interviewed them, we, we really found out that they didn't understand Cambridge, that they didn't know Cambridge at all and that some of their responses to our questions were not what we wanted. And so we went through that for about four or five months and decided that, hey, we're going to get somebody that knows Cambridge, that has been in Cambridge, that understands Cambridge. And so we hired Jim Sullivan. Council, I don't know. Your time okay. has expired. Well, I just want to say that Sometimes it's best to keep who you have if they are qualified and can keep the job rather than go abroad and try to find somebody who does not know our city. Thank you. And thank you for your testimony. Susan Freitas, followed by City Council and former Mayor Kenneth Rees, followed by Timothy Flaherty. Hi, my name is Susan Freitas. I have a home at 140 Thorndike Street, Cambridge. East Cambridge, that is. Um, I have a small business in East Cambridge. I've known Louis de Pasquale for over 50 years, and I don't know anybody better for this job. He is the most dedicated person I know. He was born and raised in Cambridge. We all hung around together in the, back in the days, and there, he is a great mentor. He is for the city. I think he eats, sleeps, and drinks it. And Cambridge is his home. It'll always be his home. And he is for the people of Cambridge. And I think he's the best person for this job. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Former city council and former mayor Kenneth Rees, followed by Timothy Flaherty, followed by Margaret Drury, former city clerk. Good evening, and good, good evening. to see you all. Um, I came to uh, speak in support of the contract extension for uh, the current city man manager, Louis de Pasquale. I find it very heartening that uh, the, the, the fact of baseball and the many metaphors from baseball that describe Louis, because while I've known him over 40 years, I, I think I met his real es essence in the midst of Little League Baseball and to see his utter devotion to the children of Cambridge, particularly those in his charge and his support and nurturing of them, it makes you understand that he does understand the core of the city. And the true uh, qualification for city manager of Cambridge is the love of Cambridge. 
marriage, and he has that in spades. I, I assure you that. But he also, I met him in another context when, you all won't believe this, but sometimes they didn't elect the mayor on time. And as the senior member of the council, I was in that position often longer than a month. And I would have to represent that office in one time a, 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 a interviewing for a city position that had a lot to do with children. And, and we had a very good and diverse pool. And the oddest thing is that there were people in the pool who were clearly unqualified, but were somehow in the pool due to connections they had with some of us. And in the pool was an African-American woman who was the exceptional candidate, but was having a hard time in this pool. But luckily, Louie knew her and her son from Little League. And for one of the few times in Cambridge during my service, I was in a battle with, with somebody who I knew what, knew what war this was and what we must do. Now, unfortunately, suddenly we got a mayor, and I was bounced out of that, and they did not hire that woman. But it was the context of what, that I remember back to so richly that I felt Louis was an ally in understanding that in this circle, something that shouldn't happen when happen will happen unless we're vigilant. It happened anyway, so yet we are not uh, saved in that story. I really think, though, we need Louis. If you want new management, begin now to look around the country. But as former rep and former counselor Graham said, when I first sat in this circle, I believe we, the, our city manager, the new one, would be from Santa Monica or some other hip city. Council Reeves. Okay, by the time I left here, I fully realize that the love of Cambridge is the only qualification and that more than likely it's got to be somebody who understands how complex and peculiar Thank we you, are. Thank you, Councilor Reeves. Thank you, Mayor. I appreciate it. I strongly support Louis. Councilor Reeves. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Tim Flaherty followed by our former city clerk, Margaret Drury, followed by Patrick Barrett. Good afternoon. My name is Timothy Flaherty. I'm an attorney. I live at 103 Fresh Palm Park with my wife, Lisa, and my son, Timothy. And as I was sitting here thinking about and listening to everyone else, I realized my son, Timothy, is the, represents the fifth generation of my family in Cambridge. And it's very hard to believe that my family's lived in Cambridge for that long. It's equally as difficult for me to believe that I didn't know Louis de Pasquale. I knew of him, but I didn't know him. I didn't play baseball for him. I never interacted with him until recently, in the last couple of years, professionally, I interacted with him. And when I did, I found out exactly how talented he is, how bright he is, how encyclopedic his knowledge is, his historical and institutional background, the city of Cambridge, is unparalleled. He knows every department, every street, and he knows everything there is, every facet of city government. And when I think of cities, I think of people. That's really what it is. And, uh, and I think of how Louie interacts with the families and the kids and my own son at the Tobin Fields uh, with Little League Baseball. And it's easy to forget, I think, sometimes that we live in a world-class city. This is the Paris of America. It's easy to forget because we're all used to Harvard and MIT and, you know, the culture and, and just the, the incredible resources in Cambridge. But I think it's also easy to forget that none of this happens by accident without a strong city manager, somebody who runs the city the way Louis does. And he does it with a mind of Cambridge is about people. Uh, and he does everything he can to support how people live in the city, how families live in the city. And it, it, it's, it's easy to forget that, and, and it's, I think of other city managers because I have through my practice an opportunity to interact with municipal officials all across Massachusetts. And as I think of Louis, and I'm re we're referring to the city manager of Cambridge by his first name, Louis. That in and of, of itself is unique. When I think of how more talented and collaborative and inclusive and thoughtful and dignified Mr. De Pasquale is, as compared to all of the others that I deal with on a daily basis across Massachusetts, it's easy to forget how good we have it. He's outstanding. Um, and I would ask you all to really 
really consider how lucky we are to have him and to renew his contract because the city of Cambridge is about people who live here and he does an extraordinary job making sure that all of our lives are better. So I want to thank him for his service and thank you for your time. Thank you for your testimony. Margaret Drury, our former city clerk, followed by Patrick Barrett, followed by Lee Ferris. Good evening. Good evening. Margaret Drury, 1 Dudley Court, Cambridge, Massachusetts. I support the extension of city manager Deep Pasquale's contract. During his tenure, Cambridge has been a very well-managed and innovative city. The hallmarks of a successful municipality are the development and maintenance of a professional and competent administrative staff and workforce and the allocation of city resources to manage that work in accordance with the priorities that set by the majority vote of the legislative body. Our department heads are professional and knowledgeable in their fields and our city manager is adept at managing the city's resources in accordance with the priorities of the city council. A difficult task in the best of times due to the fact that while the constituencies of the nine constituencies of the nine members of the legislative body overlap. They are by no means identical. Mr. Des Des Louis does not seek to make policy for the city, which is the job of the council. But when the council has voted to adopt a particular party policy, he works very hard to implement the policy. If I were more cognizant with baseball statistics, I would give him a very high bat batting score for the level of his achievement of this goal. Louis's management, both fiscal and administrative, has enabled the City Council to provide resources for the many services and programs that benefit all of our residents. Over the last 30 years that I worked for the City of Cambridge, beginning at the Cambridge Ring Control Board, I have had the opportunity to observe Louis's strong support for affordable housing. And as a city manager, he has overseen a dramatic increase in the city's funding for affordable housing. He's also supported increased funding for the Cambridge Public Schools, including the building and renovation of our aging schools. He has supported the city's increased focus on sustainability, and he has supported, provided support for ongoing and new human services that are so essential to the most vulnerable members of our community. The many accomplishments achieved during his tenure are truly impressive and represent the city manager's successful management and allocation of resources for an extraordinary array of city council priorities that have benefited Cambridge. And last but not least, like everyone before me, I have to mention Louis's deep love for and knowledge of the city of Cambridge and his des Clark. desire to use the resources to Thank benefit the entire testimony. community. Thank you. Thank you very much. Patrick Barrett, followed by Lee Ferris, followed by Heather Hoffman. Uh, Thank you, Councillor Simmons. My name is Patrick Barrett. I'm here to say a couple of things. One, uh, going through this political exercise of jockeying to figure out whether or not we're going to extend the city manager's contract to me seems like a colossal waste of time. You should renew it. You should do it right now. Uh, you should let him get back to work and deal with the massive crisis that we're facing right now instead of going through this yet again. Because I remember going through it with Rich Rossi and it was annoying then, it's annoying now. Um, spend the time figuring out, because Louis is not going to be here forever, who's going to be the comp manager after Louis? What kind of city do we want after Louis? Because Louis, by himself, is you know, just the manager. There's a whole team of people behind him, a whole team of people that when he goes, they go. And you need to think about how the city is structured and how the city works. Um, I didn't want to come up here because, quite frankly, I shouldn't be up here. None of us should be up here right now. Um, the crisis that's currently at, uh, out there is way worse than I think anyone here realizes. Um, however, 
um, I would ask that the council renew Louis's contract, let him get back to work, spend the next year putting together what you guys want for a city manager for the city. Because I swear, if you guys spend any time going over the political nonsense that you guys went through with Rossi before, it, it, it makes you just look terrible. And we don't need it right now. We really don't. And it's not hysteria and that's not theatrics. It's just reality. You're, not, you're, not, you're going to renew his contract, so just do it. And then think about how you want these city departments to be run. The License Commission sent out an email to all my businesses. It's reprehensible. That's a problem. Let's work on it. CDD, CDC, uh, CDD, sorry, <laughs> CDC, a little, uh, you know, they need work, lots of work, but you're not going to solve it all right now. So resolve yourselves to fix these problems incrementally, systematically, not to go through some nonsense about whether or not we're going to hire Louis. Louis's awesome. I like him a lot. You should hire him. And then think about what happens afterwards, but not, don't do it now. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Lee Ferris, followed by Heather Hoffman, followed by Reverend Ellis Washington. Good evening, counselors, and um, <clears throat> thanks for your uh, attention to this matter. I'm Lee Ferris, 269 Norfolk Street, and I'm speaking today for the Cambridge Residence Alliance. Uh, many people today have mentioned the city manager's accomplishments. However, before the council decides on whether to extend the manager's contract, the Residence Alliance asks that the council decide on a process to evaluate the manager. And I have to say, I don't think I've seen a good process or in most cases any process for the council to evaluate the manager. So starting now when you have a manager that a lot of people think is doing something good, is good for the council to do. Initially, the council could evaluate the manager using the most recent council goals, including some criteria for success and also requiring a means for public input. Longer term, the council should design a more comprehensive evaluation, as is done with the school superintendent. And that evaluation should address the results that can be accomplished and a wide range of leadership skills that should be demonstrated. For that to work, we ask that the council adopt, after getting public input, an organizational vision, mission, goals, and objectives that can be objectively tracked to determine progress. We also recommend that the city manager complete a self-evaluation. In addition to working on the initial evaluation of the manager and designing a comprehensive manager evaluation, we ask that the council establish a process and timing for a national city manager search and hiring process. That process should include a national salary survey. At a recent public meeting of the Cambridge Residence Alliance, many residents expressed dissatisfaction with the lack of evaluation of the manager by the council and expressed concerns about specific aspect of the manager's performance. For example, residents were unhappy that there were a number of issues where the manager had not responded to the council's repeated policy orders. And you heard about those at the prior uh, meeting of this committee. Residents also expressed dissatisfaction with the development model that this and prior managers have used, which includes granting uh, permits for substantial commercial development in order to generate tax revenue. So a comprehensive evaluation of the manager and planning on how to hire the next manager would benefit our city, and I hope that you will work on that as soon as possible. Thank you. And thank you for your testimony. Heather Hoffman, followed by Reverend Ellis Washington, after which we have Mike Nakagawa. Hello, Heather Hoffman, 213 Hurley Street. I want to start out by expressing my disappointment that we're having this meeting at all. We shouldn't be meeting. Patrick Barrett's right. This is, a, this is a crisis and we're not taking it seriously. That being said, um, I want to say that I live in the center of the ATM that makes that AAA bond rating possible. And what I see around me is families leaving because the overdevelopment in my neighborhood is making it unlivable. 
and we are doing nothing to increase the supply of homes, not people warehouses, homes in this city. Why are our values going up? Because we don't have more homes. We have more and more and more people working here. We build more and more and more commercial development. But we don't build homes. What we build is the functional equivalent of extended stay motels, places with six month leases. If you ask the developers of all these big apartment buildings what they expect their annual turnover to be, every last one of them will say 50 to 100%. We are not getting neighbors. We're getting people who are passing through. That does not create the community that this city needs to remain the place that I personally want to live in for the rest of my life. The place, what, what we are turning into is a place that my husband wants to leave, that my neighbors want to leave, that we know that we are losing people. We've, people have talked about the statistics of people of color leaving. We are not doing this right. And I believe that we need to find a city manager who looks to our future, who looks to create community, not someone who sees his job as primarily collecting taxes. Collecting taxes is, is a fine thing, but if you have no vision for what to do with them, then you've missed a huge part of the job. Why is it? that we had this huge problem over Eversource, not just in my neighborhood, but in Cambridgeport as well, because the city hasn't planned. And when Envision, in, in the Envision process, they were asked about talking about energy, they were told, no, you may not. Imagine where that must have come from because it didn't come from the vision Ms. Of, of the consultants. Thank you for your testimony. Thank you. We have uh, Reverend Ellis Washington. There are three other people that are signed up. If you're interested in speaking on the record, there are index cards at the table. Just fill them out, and the clerk will pick, come pick them up. So if there's anyone that speak, wants to speak on the record, please fill out one of these in, index cards, and the clerk will come pick it up. Pastor Washington. Thank you for the ability to address you uh, on this issue, and I rise uh, to support uh, the extension of the contract for Mr. Luigi Pasquale. Uh, I am uh, Pastor Ellis Washington of the St. Paul AME Church, 37 and 85 Bishop Allen Drive. And uh, although I've been pastor of St. Paul now going into my seventh year, I realize that is relatively short compared to some of the uh, persons who I've heard speak who have lived here all their life. But I will say that it has been uh, a joy getting to know Mr. De Pasquale, especially over the last few years. Um, I've been honored to serve uh, as a member of the uh, City Manager's Advisory Council. I've had a chance to uh, get to know him better, watch him uh, work, get a feel for his uh, leadership, for his heart, uh, which I believe is truly at the uh, center of Cambridge. He loves not only the city, and as you've heard others say, he knows the city uh, inside and out. Um, but I also want to say that he's someone that I trust as someone who uh, has uh, a heart in the right place for doing what is right. Um, for everyone, uh, to the best of his ability, uh, in the city. I trust him as it regards to issues of affordable housing and working towards those issues. And I trust him as someone who, uh, not only leads with humility, but is responsive, uh, to the needs of persons in the community. And so with that, I would just simply urge that we extend the contract of Mr. De Pasquale. Thank you. And thank you for your testimony. Mike Nakagawa, followed by Dennis Benzan, then James Williamson. Hello, Mike Nakagawa, 51 Madison Avenue. Um, I'd just like to start by saying that I agree with what Heather Hoffman had said, except change the neighborhood to alewife, and I lost my spouse to cancer, so that part didn't apply either. On my personal comments, um, I think Louie has done 
well fiscally for the city, but it comes from an older time in the 70s or 80s, early 80s, when the city was struggling. And um, getting businesses to come has been what has built the city to be as desirable as it is now. But I believe the times have changed and he's too conservative for the current conditions. Um, the commercial growth has made much more demand for housing than we can keep up with, with all the jobs we've created. And there are no signs of it stopping. I think we could do more by um, looking at what the, getting things from the commercial basis. I just moved in, started this week at Cambridge Crossing um, as one of the first commercial tenants there, and I'm watching all the foundations go up surrounding the building there. Um, Louis has advertised every year how low our property taxes are just year after year, but then we don't have the money in the budget for more affordable housing projects uh, or, or support for uh, low-income housing. We can't afford enough more traffic patrol officers or enough CDD staff to handle the workload that they have, which is just incredible. As part of the Climate Resilience Zoning Task Force, I don't see enough priority um, for our climate crisis. And I don't see him as pushing that widely. And citywide broadband has been on the table for a long time. If we knew his contract, as I fully expect, I think we should make some goals and review them and start a process as the basis for uh, what will come later. Uh, maybe we can hire him as a consultant for part of the time so we can mentor the next city manager and take that energy but let someone grow into their role. Um, we knew that the end of his contract would be coming, actually multiple times. We have not made a succession plan um, except what appears to be a fourth in the line of the, he uh, of the Healy, uh, I don't know what you want to call that. Um, but I, I would like to see more diversity in the power structure of um, the chief officers of the executive branches of our federal, state, and municipal levels. And this is one place we could start. Thank you. And thank you for your testimony. Dennis Benzan, followed by James Williamson. Good evening, Madam Chair, uh, Council Members. Uh, my name is Dennis Benzin. I reside at One Pine Street uh, in Cambridge. Um, I want to thank all the speakers that came uh, before me. Uh, Rob was actually uh, my son's coach, uh, and my son got a chance to play in that game uh, last year uh, against Louis in a championship. Um, so, uh, you know, I really want to uh, just thank everyone for all the great comments around Louis. Uh, I'm here today uh, to support renewing Manager DePasquale's contract. I came to know Louis first as the director of the Mayor's Summer Youth Employment Program back in 1993 through 1996. Uh, it was a time when I fought to grow the program from about 350 youth workers to 550 uh, youth workers. It was up to Louis as a city's finance leader uh, to figure out how to fund it, and he did. Uh, he understood that our youth are partly shaped by shaped early by employment experiences, uh, and so Louis did his best to find the money to grow the program. I later had the opportunity to work closer with Louis when I served as vice mayor and co-chair of the Ordinance Committee and Subcommittee on Economic Development here in these chambers. During my tenure, as many of you know, I fought for affordable housing, support for the opioid addiction, the arts and science and technology education, arts and mathematics education in particular for the utilization of the Foundry Building as a STEAM workforce training site. Whether it was helping me understand the financial implications of new development or finding money to help save expiring use buildings or finding money to support our first city-supported Latino festival at University Park or to help find money to help beautify Central Square, Louis was always willing to find a way to financially support these efforts. Today, I serve with Louis on the CHA board where I have witnessed firsthand his commitment to our immigrant community and those often served by a healthcare system. Louis is someone that has mastered the ability to find a balance between being fiscally responsible on the one hand and serving the most in need on the other hand. This is the ability to balance social and economic justice with fiscal responsibility. It's one of the, one of the key characteristics of 
of some of the best leaders, municipal leaders. Louis is one of them. So when I hear members of this council suggest that we need a new city manager because our current city manager does not have enough social economic justice in him, I want you to look in the mirror and I want you to ask yourself, have I really been socially, socially and economically just myself? And for how long? I'm bothered by those of you in these chambers that often question others for not having enough social justice when leaders like Louis have exemplified social and economic justice for much of their life. He is the one that Excuse I see me. walking through Central Square. You have two things. Uh, you have come to the end of your time, and I failed to introduce you appropriately as the former vice mayor and city councilor uh, on the city council. So please accept my apologies for not doing that for you. Uh, but I would have to respectfully ask you to yield the floor. Okay. Um, but if I just, for 10 seconds. Uh, uh, do I have unanimous consent for 10 seconds plus one? That's 11. Thank you. Appreciate it, uh, Thank you Madam welcome. Chair. I, I just want to end by just saying this. I'm a business owner in Central Square. Our city is about to face one of the most important and critical challenges in the history of this city. I ask you guys to focus your attention on the challenges that lie ahead. Louis is someone that can help lead us through these challenges. What we are about to see in this city is something that we probably have never seen in the history of this city. So I ask you to go with stability and go with somebody that really knows our city. And let's not waste any time. Thank you. And thank you for your testimony. James Williamson. Thank you. Um, First of all, I'd like to ask that the uh, Department of uh, Cambridge Department of Public Health be asked to remove. They are the principal website that is providing information on the virus, and I would ask. Williamson, that, that's not before us this evening. Okay, uh, I would like to ask why the city manager has perhaps not been more attentive to the fact that the principal uh, place for information linked from the website has this grotesque image of the actual molecule of the virus, which is not reassuring, which is kind of scary. And the Williamson, purpose I'm going to is help you, help guide you a bit. We're speaking to the extension. Could you keep your remarks? Yeah, I thought it was context. important enough, given the fact that we have this pandemic, to, to, to bring this to the attention of That's how you people in the, gov in, the, in the government, including the manager. Um, so uh, I'm going to go out on a limb and, and predict that the manager's contract will be extended. Um, I do think there might be a question about uh, MIT's uh, favorite phrase at MIT is you can't manage what you don't measure. And I wonder if there are metrics for measuring the performance of city managers and if there were what they would look like. And I'm not convinced they exist or that it would be necessarily very easy to come up with any. Um, I just want to point out some areas where I've been disappointed. Somebody said earlier that it's little things that matter. I think some people seem to get get their concerns addressed and other people don't. Um, on Sunday, the number one bus is going to no longer st make the stops around Harvard Yard. Um, it is going to turn down Dunster Street. I would like, I wish that the city administration and, and the management had done a better job advocating for those of us who don't have cars, which is what we're all supposed to be doing, and rely on the bus service, which is no longer no going to exist in the name of supposedly uh, reducing the travel time by two minutes. Mr. Williamson, please yeah. stay on the subject of the city manager. I'm talking about Not issues of, people talked about baseball here, and I'm talking about. In the context of the manager's Yes, contract. and I am talking please about the city manager's role in sticking up for and giving voice to the concerns of the people who live in this city I think some of my observations are actually more relevant than some of the things that have been allowed to be said by others. I'm concerned, I have concerns that I think have gone unaddressed by the city manager. So is it all right if I talk about some of those concerns or, or not? The, the okay, the so not being able to take the bus anymore at stops that I've been do, uh, relying on for years is a concern. Uh, not getting protection as a pedestrian walking along a supposedly shared path. These are issues that I've actually sat down with and met with the manager and discussed and hoped for these concerns being addressed. 
the shared pathways, supposedly shared pathways, out where I live. Mr. Williamson? Well, I, you were interrupting me, and I think maybe I could get a little bit of a consideration for the fact that you were interrupting. With the council's and, consent, you have 10 more seconds. 10 more seconds, well. And, and this is a democratic wisely. process mm -hmm. that we're all supposed to be uh, touting how wonderful it, it is. It I'd it just like the opportunity to speak to a few areas where I think there's been some failures. And that has to do with pedestrian safety out where I live, where I, I don't even want to walk to the T station anymore because of the way people race their bikes through the supposedly shared path. Couldn't something be done about that? Nothing's been done. Couldn't something be done to train the lifeguards to be able to keep the, the, the DCR pool open for the two weeks that it's now being shut? When $15 million can be found to pay members of the Shockett family to sustain affordable units. So um, thank you so much for your testimony. I, 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 that there you are a couple writing, things I would have liked to have said, but please put this, that is, in writing and this is obviously sure not a hospitable environment and for people so to be able to testimony. speak about their concerns in a respectful way. Is there anyone that has not way. spoken on the record that would like to do so before we close public comment? Please come forward. Is there anyone that would like to speak on the record before we close public comment? Seeing none, pleasure of the committee. On a motion by Council McGovern to close public comment, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Public comment is now closed. As I said, right. A point of order, Madam Chair, we, we should do a roll call. Oh, thank you. I've got you right here. Uh, roll call, please, Mr. Clark. On closing public comment, Councillor. Councilor McGovern. Yes. Councilor Sabrina Wheeler. Yes. Yes. Councilor Toomey. Yes. Councilor Zondervan. Yes. Yes. Councilor Simmons. Yes. Motion passes five in favor, zero against. Thank you. But the roll call vote, and my apologies to you, Councilor Zondervan. Uh, public comment is now closed. As I had mentioned earlier in the meeting, uh, just for people's, anyone who has any health concerns, please do not feel as though you have to sit through the rest of the meeting. We'd like to encourage you to uh, go to your place where you feel most more safe, uh, but I am not going to discourage you to stay if it is your will. That being said, so at our last meeting of the government operations claims and claims, a couple of things came up. We took a, a, a suggestions that came up on the agenda. There was a discussion around uh, evaluation. There was discussion around goals, and there was discussion about having a process in this process, if I understood it correctly, that we would talk about what we're doing in context of our current city manager while we looked for a new city manager or put a process together. And I had said that I, what I would do is I would look all the suggestions over, which I did, and I would come back with a suggestion of a process. So let me uh, just say for you um, my thoughts, and then we will open the floor, and I hope that we'll be able to take a few votes. And again, in the interest of people's health and safety, I would hope that we could do this uh, in such a way we don't keep people very long. On the subject of evaluation, it did come up that the council did not formally evaluate the city manager. And so when I looked over the records, there was that the, the government operations and claims committee, which is uh, given that charge, did not call a meeting to ask for a public or full um, evaluation of the city manager. In the city manager's contract, it does say, part 2.3, the city council shall review and evaluate the performance of the city manager at meetings scheduled by the government operations rules and claims committee of the city council. Said review and evaluation shall be done in accordance with Massachusetts General Law 30A, chapter 18-25. So it was the responsibility of the government operations rules and claims committee to have that evaluation. It did not happen. However, I do want for, for the record, and I will give this to um, I can give this to our clerk. I do have a letter where the city manager did reach out to the members of the city council and, and said, 
you know, since becoming city manager, I have met with city councils and listened carefully to the collective feedback that they have shared with me. I work hard to be responsive to the advice provided to me. I believe that giving and receiving honest feedback is the foundation of a positive relationship between our city manager and the city council. If you are interested in me meeting with me, please contact Stacy Cooper, CC above, to, the, to schedule a time. And then as a part of this letter, there were 12 opportunities to meet with him, but it also said, if none of these times work for you, um, please give me a call through my executive assistant, and I will accommodate that. So I just want to, for the record, say that whereas although the Government Operations Rules and Claims Committee did not call for an evaluation, the city manager on his own um, ability reached out to each city council and said, I want to sit down and go over my work performance with you. So I, I want to clear the air about the fact that there was no evaluation of the city manager. There was a evaluation of the city manager. There wasn't one under government operations rules and the claims committee. I take that as the full power of the council and not of the city manager. The next item that came before as a suggestion was around the goals. And I did sit down and talk with the clerk just to see where, our goal, what, where we were and what goals that we might be considering. And the record shows that the goals that this council is operating under are the 2017-2018 goals because the Government Operations Claims and Rules Committee did not take up the, go the, the goals of the City Council in that term. And so just so people know that the goals that we're working under are the 17-18 goals. And where I think it is extraordinarily important that we have goals, a sense of purpose, and a sense of direction, I just do think that one of the things that the council should do outside of the city manager's discussion on um, his extension, it should not be in this context. And then the last thing and I thought was a very important was a, the conversation about uh, looking for a new city manager. So either in two years or in four years, we are going to be looking for a new city manager. And I think that it is important that we have a process through which that we look to to decide what that process is. I do believe that that process is different than a negotiating or having a discussion around what goes on with our current city manager. So where I agree that there should be a process, I don't think these two are the same. I think one is about an extension and the other is about who that new city manager may be. And I think that it is imprudent upon this council to look at that and talk about that and have a process through which we have that discussion. But I do not think it is appropriate to have it in this context. So what I have put, I am putting forward to you this evening is the following. That the Government Operations Committee has now formally received the request from Louis A. D. Pisquale of his desire to enter into discussions to extend his contract as city manager. I see that as the first step, and that's where we are now. His letter is here. We've accepted it. I was, I'm going to ask that there is a motion that I, as the chair of the Government Operations Committee, be authorized to have a discussion with Mr. D. Pisquale regarding that request. The third step would be after that discussion, I would schedule an executive session to discuss strategies regarding this. The fourth step would be that we as the participants go into executive session to agree to negotiate an extension. And then the fourth step would be to hold the negotiations. And if those negotiations are successful, that would lead to step five, which is that the government operations committee would then forward a recommendation to the full city council for voting upon. Those are my suggestions, and so with that, I open the floor for discussion. Pleasure, the committee. Uh, Madam Chair, for the purpose of discussion, I would move to uh, a vote of the Government Operations Committee to uh, authorize the Chair, Council Simmons, to uh, enter into uh, negotiations with the City Manager in terms of um, the process that you just laid out at, to move forward with that. Thank you, Council Toomey. There is a motion before the, the committee to authorize the chair to be authorized to have a discussion with Mr. De Pasquale regarding this request. Discussion. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I would uh, 
Picking back up the point about the <clears throat> evaluation, which is in the city's uh, Council, we, Sabrina Wheeler, uh, we're using new technology, and so I just want to urge you to slow down a little bit so that your testimony is picked up by sure. the software. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, as you noted in the city manager's contract, section 2.3, it says the city council shall review and evaluate the performance of the city manager at meetings scheduled by the government operations rules and claims committee of the city council, um, and that also those uh, meetings, said review and evaluation, shall be done in accordance with the open meeting laws. Uh, as you noted, we haven't had those meetings. Um, you pointed out that the city manager reached out to counselors, and that isn't the same thing as us having an open evaluation process. Um, those meetings were off the record. They weren't done uh, in accordance with open meeting law. Um, I would suggest that uh, to to move forward without conducting a, an evaluation uh, would be in violation of the contract um, and therefore in violation of the, the city's charter, which puts it in the council to hire the city manager. Um, I would like to see a written evaluation done beforehand with input of each of the different councilors. Uh, the city manager is the most important person in carrying out the council's goals uh, on a lot of different aspects, municipal broadband, transit, affordable housing. Uh, the evaluation is also important because the city manager is the most powerful person in uh, Cambridge city government. In, in our neighbors in Somerville uh, and in Boston, that would be the mayor. In Cambridge, that's not the case. It's the city manager uh, who isn't directly elected by the public, and so I think it's our duty as the council to have a, a formal evaluation that's public uh, so that councillors know, uh, so the public knows how councillors stand on the, the city manager. Um, uh, I'd like to see the evaluation uh, before we move forward with a contract extension. Um, I also just don't think it's appropriate to, to make an important decision at this time, uh, given the COVID-19 outbreak. Um, there were a number of folks who didn't come uh, tonight because uh, of fear of being in, in open spaces. I know the solicitor is working on uh, looking at open meeting law and the potential to have public input and public meetings of the council uh, at a way that complies with open meeting law, but maybe doesn't necessitate being here in person. Um, so I would like to see this take place before we move forward. Thank you. Thank you for the discussion. Sure. Councilor Zondervan, and then we'll hear from Councilor McGovern. Councilor Zondervan, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. I first of all want to affirm the comments by my colleague uh, who just spoke. I don't think we should even be having this meeting uh, given the seriousness of the crisis that we're dealing with. And I think it speaks to um, the question before us, how this crisis has been handled thus far and how it's being handled. Uh, going forward. I think the city has failed to prepare for this crisis and is continuing uh, to not prepare properly for what we are facing. So I think that's a serious concern that we need to address. Um, in terms of the um, process, the, the motion that, that you proposed, I completely agree with my colleague that it would be inappropriate uh, to proceed in that manner without having an evaluation of the city manager's contract. And the evaluation would take place in the context of the goals uh, set by the previous council. I believe you meant to say that we are operating under the 2016-2017 goals because we did not um, set different goals in the 2018-2019 term. And we've also not uh, set different goals in the current term thus far. And um, so, again, I don't think we can proceed in the way that, that you propose. I think the correct way to proceed is to conduct an evaluation of the manager's performance. Uh, we furthermore have um, the, the better part of a year to complete this process. So there's no particular need uh, to move in this way. And our attention should rightly be focused on dealing with the coronavirus crisis, as was pointed out during public comment by my colleague, and not on conducting this particular process right now. Thank you Thank for you. your remarks. Do you yield the floor, Councillor? Um, yes, one more thing. We also uh, are dealing with a gender discrimination lawsuit, which I also think is relevant and, and should be discussed in the context of this particular contract. 
Uh, thank you, Councillor. And uh, Councillor Zondervan, having yielded the floor, I will now give the floor over to Councillor McGovern. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just it might, just to make sure I understand correctly, the the motion is to allow you just to enter into conversations with the city manager about an extension. We are not a, we are not approving an extension at this point. We are not voting to extend his contract at this point. In order for you to uh, even begin to have those conversations with him, you need authorization in which to do that. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct, Councilor. Okay. So, you know, I have point of order, Madam Chair. Please state your please, uh, please state your point of order, Councillor. I, I don't believe that was a correct summary of the motion. The motion outlined five or six different steps, beginning with you having a conversation with the manager. I don't believe that's a point of order, Councillor. I give the floor back to Councillor McGovern. So, um, I, I and. Maybe I was confused. I, I, I thought that you were listing out the potential steps of the process, but the, the, the initial step or the initial motion was to allow you to start that process. Am I incorrect in thinking that, hearing it that way? Are you, uh, to respond to you, Councillor, the motion that I was calling for was to give the chair be, uh, the chair be authorized to have a discussion with Mr. De Pasquale regarding his request. Okay, so all we're doing tonight is giving you permission to start a conversation about his request for an extension. That I think is appropriate. It moves the conversation forward. Um, it doesn't guarantee that an extension is gonna be given. It doesn't guarantee that we can't take other steps in the meantime, but it allows you to start a conversation. Uh, and I'm, I, I apologize for not having um, either my computer or the contract right in front of me, but I do want to clarify one thing. Um, Councilor Zondervan mentioned that we have a year, or maybe he said over a year. I thought we had to let the manager know by September of this year about whether or not we were extending his contract. So it is not, oh, am I correct in that? I guess. Uh, yes. Uh, to your point, I believe I'm reading the right section. Section 3, the term 3.4 reads as follows. If the city intends to continue Mr. De Pasquale's employment beyond January 8, 2021, 20, it shall give written notice to Mr. De Pasquale on or before September 14th, 2020. Okay, so we don't have a year to do this. We have until September 14th, 2020. Um, so I just wanted to make sure I was correct on that. Um, you know, you you asked to keep messages uh you know, comments brief, so I, I will. Um, so I'm not going to get into why um, I think it's appropriate to extend Mr. De Pasquale's contract for two years. Um, you know, I think it's very easy to focus on the things that we're not happy with. Um, you know, we heard broadband mentioned a couple times. I'm not happy with that either. Um, but yet, I don't know quite where we've started believing that we have to be happy about everything that somebody does in order to have them continue to be employed uh, with the city. Um, you know, when you look at, when I, and, and we heard comments about, and I mean no disrespect to former city manager Healy, but when we hear comments about Mr. De Pasquale is just an extension of city manager Healy, and although I didn't serve with city manager Healy, I can pretty much guarantee you, having been around at that time, when I look at the surveillance ordinance, first of its kind in the country that we passed, the facial recognition ordinance, not the first, but one of the first, the bike infrastructure ordinance, the first of its kind in the country. Um, Mr. De Pasquale went into those conversations at, you know, timid on some, not sure where he stood, uh, against some of them, and was able to sit down with constituents, with stakeholders, to discuss and work out a compromise, to work out, uh, and change his opinion. And, you know, that is something we didn't see in the past. So I, I don't make that just because someone happened to work in City Hall uh, when Mr. Healy was here doesn't mean that that person is Mr. Healy. Um, you know, and, uh, and that's not a knock on Mr. Healy. There are a lot of good things that Mr. Healy did. Um, so I think, um, but beyond that, beyond my, my feeling that I think the manager has earned uh, a two-year extension, I do think um, I've been part of a few national searches. Um, 
when we do them, we often hear from a lot of the same people we're hearing from tonight that they've gone too fast, they've been too rushed, there wasn't enough input. Having a two-year, an ability of a two-year extension to actually plan a community process where we can really think about and have time to talk about what we want to see in the next city manager is actually something I think would be a great benefit to the city. Um, and so for those two reasons, I'm, I, I'm happy to move this forward um, and to vote to, uh, again, only allow you to begin conversations. And that does not guarantee anything. I'm only one person here. But um, I just felt I had to respond to some of the things that, that we heard today. Um, you know, I am, not, uh, I am not in agreement with the city manager on every decision, uh, nor should I expect to be. Um, but he is open, he is flexible, he communicates, he is willing to look at things from all perspectives, uh, he is willing to compromise, he is willing to collaborate, and those are all very positive things. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you, Council McGovern. Do you yield the floor? Point of information. Please, um, please state your point of information. Thank you. And uh, the motion that uh, the chair made, would the negotiations with the city manager uh, just be between the chair and the city manager, or would they be the, the government operations committee as a whole? Just the chair. Is it possible to amend the motion to include the government operations committee? You can, but you, I would have to, I'm going to recognize my, your colleague that has asked to have the floor before you, and then we can come back to you. Councilor Nolan. Sorry, I'll be near you. Um, thank you, uh, Chair Simmons, because I'm, I'm not a voting member of this committee, so I'm, uh, I, won't be, I won't be able to vote on anything that's coming before us, and I also appreciate that you recognize me so that I could um, respond a little bit. I also appreciate the research you did on the couple of uh, questions that were raised at the last one, notably on the evaluation and the question of goals. And on the evaluation, it, it is unfortunate that the, the prior committee, which I believe was perhaps not your committee, did not um, convene to look at an evaluation. It, it, as you may remember, um, it happened a couple times when I served on school committee, and it was not good. It, it's never positive for a body to not do its job, and that's part of our job, as you pointed out. That is not something that it was only on the city manager, it really was on the council to do. That being said, if this goes forward to have a discussion, it's not too late to do a very um, quick evaluation in the next month even of the city manager, which I as a council member would like to be able to, to contribute to. So I understand what, that it didn't happen in the past. We can't change that. What we can do as a body is to use our several existing city manager evaluation forms or even it if it's just a very simple form of here are the goals that, as you also pointed out, while they're from 1718, they're at least our operating goals because we haven't, as a body, included any others, have the city manager do a self-evaluation, and then even if it is just strengths and weaknesses, here's your goals, it, it, it seems to me it would make the process more complete as we move forward, and that does not have to extend out, and I would definitely say it should not extend out for many, many months, even if we have till September. What, whatever this decision is made, it should not wait until September, in my view, because that would put us in a position of having only a few months, if depending on where this was going. But again, I really believe, and I, I can, I know I probably have a couple in my files of city manager kind of evaluation, just a very quick form. I encourage us and or encourage you, as chair, to consider just over the next month to ensure that that is we are following the contract that all of us have a chance and we and it's good for the city manager. This is evaluations are really positives about how it is that positive work was done and to really sit back and summarize. And on the um, uh, the question moving forward, it, it it seems like you've laid out the steps again. I don't have a a say in that. I do think there, this city manager has done a lot of really positive um, things for the city, and there's also some questions people have, and that's where I sit, and that I really actually want to benefit from hearing from all my colleagues and talking to people around the city about their um, sense of it, because it will be a very important vote that I will take, and I, I right now, am not sure how I would vote, because I feel like I need more information. Thank you so much. And thank you for your testimony. Are you yielding the floor? Yes. Councilor Sobrino Wheeler. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I 
would make a move to amend the motion to include the full government operations committee in the contract extension discussions. Is there any discussion on the amendment? Councillor McGovern. Madam Chair, um, is there any, uh, having not been part of this um, previously, mm -hmm. or actually I was, but very early on, um, what's the precedent? How does this usually go? Thank you I'm curious. I, I'm for, for raising that. So best practice, recommends or suggests that the chair of the government operations, whoever that person may be, is the lead individual that has the discussion. And so please take the idea of a discussion that launches this conversation, one that opens up a process and does not close it out. It is so usually the best practice, and I had an opportunity to talk to several people um, about this that have done it as part of their job. This is, this is the standard is to first have a conversation and then come back to the committee based with com what comes out of that discussion. But again, it is just a conversation. And, M Madam Chair, and I believe, I believe that on the school committee, it was similar. It wasn't when there wasn't a government operations, wasn't that title, I believe it was the vice chair that would initiate, initiate conversations and then we would meet in executive session to discuss with the full, with the full committee. I think if my memory serves me, which I think you're absolutely right, uh, Council Member Govan. It's not usually the group does not get involved until the groundwork has been laid out, and it's laid out usually by either on the school committee side. It's usually laid out by the mayor or the vice mayor, the the, the mayor designating a lead individual. To, to lead those discussion and bring it back to the council. So using best practice, what I have suggested to this committee is to um, authorize the chair to, to start that discussion from which we have further discussion. Do you yield the floor, Councilor? Further discussion on the amendment. Sure. I have a point of information in that. What uh, Could you explain a little bit what groundwork would be laid in the, the discussion that would then be brought back to the committee? Are you talking to me? I am. Uh, and when I talk about groundwork, so we do know that the, super, the superintendent, you got me have a superintendent on the brain now, um, that the city manager is interested in extending his contract, but we have nothing to work with. And so the, the discussion would be looking at, so what is the city manager looking, what does that look like to, to him? We can't have a meaningful discussion about anything until we have something in front of us. And so this groundwork, if you will, would be to have the discussion is what is it, what is it Mr. City Manager, that you are seeking from the council by way of your two-year extension. Then we bring that back in executive, in executive session because best practice has suggested that you don't negotiate personnel issues in an open forum. So that would be brought back to the voting members, but any member, of course, can come to executive session, to the voting members to be to discuss, negotiate it, and then we would move forward, if that helps. Does that help you, Councillor? That does, thank you. Okay. Is there any further discussion on the amendment? Hearing none, we will then... Madam Chair? Councillor Zondervan. Thank you. Uh, could you clarify, do, has the manager requested a two-year extension? The manager has a, could requested a two-year extension. Okay. Um, and could you explain why the details about his request could not be presented to the committee as a whole? Why, why do we need so to designate you to... Council is on demand. Right now, we're speaking about the amendment that has been offered by your colleague, and so discussion has to be around that amendment, after which... That's what I'm discussing, because... Then I can't hear you very well. I, I apologize. His amendment is um, that the entire committee would enter into this conversation with the city manager rather than simply the chair. So my, my question is why we would choose to have the chair enter into this conversation with the manager. So if your question, Councillor, is why the chair go into negotiation, uh, my answer to you, Councillor, is best practices and former practices have been one which 
There is a lead person. It is usually, um, more often than not, the chair of govern op government operations, claims, and rules, however the name is. And so I am following the process, the procedure, and the best practices of, of earlier processes, processes. Do you yield the floor, Counselor? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Further discussion? Okay. We, are mo we are now voting on the amendment. And let me just speak um, to the amendment before I yield the floor for the, for the call of the roll. Um, again, I have spent a great deal of time talking with people who have done this and also relying on my earlier experience having served as mayor and serving on the school committee on the best practices. And the best practice is one where the, in this case, government operations, the chair leads the process and brings back the discussion, the, the fruits of that discussion with the candidate to the committee. Uh, so I will not be voting for the amendment because I think we're just launching a conversation. I will not be voting for the amendment because as has been earlier said, we are sort of in a place where we are in a crisis. And I, I although I value the, the point of view of my colleagues, this is not the time for us to be sort of slowing down a process that we need to move forward because we're talking about the leadership of our city, which is shared by way of our charter with the city manager. So what I am, I am going to vote for the, the main motion when it comes forward, which is that we start a discussion. Having said that, I yield the floor and I ask the clerk to make, call the roll. On the amendment, Councilor McGovern. No. No. Councilor Sabrina Wheeler. Yes. Yes, Councilor Toomey. No. No, Councilor Zondervan. Yes. Yes, Councilor Simmons. No. No, the motion fails. Two in favor, three against. We are now going to. Madam Chair, uh, I would like to uh, make a motion that we move to hold a meeting to evaluate the city manager's contract before we enter into negotiations. Um, to my colleague's point, uh, I agree that we don't have to agree uh, approve of everything in the city manager's uh, position to uh, extend the contract, um, but I think it's also true that we don't know how much of the city manager's performance we approve of or don't approve of because we haven't evaluated it. Um, and every job I've Counselor, had... Counselor? Yes. If you would, please. We are in the process of a vote. You had put an amendment before the council, which failed. Now we have to move on the main motion unamended, after which if you would like to bring your, uh, your whatever, your vote forward for a discussion and for a vote, you may, but you cannot do it at this time. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. You're very welcome. Mr. Clerk. Uh, through the chair, just through, just for clarification, I'm just going to read the, the motion one more time for the body, just so everybody's clear on what they're uh, voting on. It was a motion by Councillor Toomey to authorize the chair of the Government Operation Rules and Claims Committee to meet with the city manager to di discuss his contract extension. Is that correct, Councillor Toomey? Mm -hmm. On the motion, Councillor McGovern? Yes. Yes. Councillor Sabrina Wheeler? No. No. Councillor Toomey? Yes. Yes. Councillor Zondervan? No. No. Councillor Simmons? Yes. Yes. The motion passes three in favor, two against. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Now we, we have before us um, a, the proposal of a motion that will be offered by Councilor Sobrina Wheeler. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, I would move before we enter into negotiations that we have a, a simple meeting to evaluate the city manager's contract uh, beforehand. Uh, to my colleague's point, we don't have to approve of everything. Uh, I think we should have a discussion about what we approve of and we don't approve of before we enter into negotiations. Uh, I wasn't on the council last term. I couldn't have a say on whether the government operations had such a meeting. Um, I would like to see us have one now. Uh, I think it's a pretty straightforward request to have a written evaluation. In every job I've had, I've gotten a, a written evaluation uh, at some point, usually multiple times a year. Um, and that this is the most important position uh, in Cambridge. And I think we'd be doing uh, the public a disservice by not having a, an evaluation that was open to the public. Do you yield the floor, Councilor? I do, thank you. 
Is there further discussion? Madam Chair. Councillor McGovern. Uh, just through you to uh, Councillor Sabrina Wheeler. When you say before negotiations, are you just want to make sure, I, is that before the chair starts the motion we just passed to allow the chair to start talking with the manager? Or are you talking, their negotiations sort of, they're, they're, they happen in multiple times, multiple steps. So when are you e expecting this to happen? I, I could amend the motion uh, if it's helpful uh, to within the next month, uh, within the next maybe given the uh, COVID uh, virus and that we don't sort of know the, the process, uh, maybe within the next uh, two months. Through you, Madam Chair. Um, also McGovern. Thank you. Um, but again, is that I'm less, my question is less about the, the time, but, are you, but is your, would your motion preclude, so if we said that we would do this in two months, would that preclude the chair from engaging in the initial discussion that we just passed? Because that's, I don't see that as a negotiation. The, cha the chair is not negotiating the contract with the manager. The chair is, will be having a discussion about what the manager is looking for more formally and bring that back. So I'm just trying to get your definition of negotiation because I think an evaluation, you know, I would have no problem writing an evaluation, doing a written evaluation of the superintendent. Uh, I'm doing it to myself, Madam Chair, uh, to the city manager, but I don't want to delay what we just voted on, which is to allow Councillor Simmons to begin the process of talking to them. So I guess what's your definition of negotiation? Sure, I guess. Uh, Council Sabrina Rula. Thank you. Um, I think a point of information uh, would be helpful in just understanding what is involved in the discussion. I know the chair talked about it a little bit, but if we have the, the timeline of the extension that the city manager is asking for, um, could you clarify a bit about what else will be discussed in the discussions with the city manager? what the city manager is looking for and nothing more than that. So we now know that the city manager is looking for an extension of his contract. And so this discussion would be what would be those things that he would be interested in seeing as a part of this extension. I'm saying to you, I'm trying to remember what the letter said, but um, in part, if, if it is indeed two years, it would be, okay, if city manager, you want an extension for two years, what does that look like? You know, so I can bring something back to the government ops committee and say, this is what the city manager is looking for. And then we could then say, this is what we would like. And I would think if that, if it is your inclination or the council's committee's inclination to ask for an evaluation, that would be at that time. Because as I understand it from having looked at best practices, because we, the council, failed to execute a formal evaluation, both parties then have to agree. It is not standard practice. And one might even say a bit disingenuous to ask someone who has not been formally evaluated because the body that was poised to do that failed to do so, did not do it. And then to make that contingent on one's renewal or extension is in general practice and could be seen as maybe even inappropriate. But to your point, if it's something that you might be interested in, that is something that I could take to him to see if that is something he would be willing to agree upon. But to make it, to try to make a valuation a um, requirement to have a discussion when the council again has, I'm trying to find a benign word, not exercised its responsibility under the contract to have done it, I believe is inappropriate. So I would respectfully ask that you allow, um, if we, um, by this vote, to go forward and have a discussion to see what is exactly on the table, and then we come back in executive session and have that discussion. Manager? Wait, I think I still have I the don't floor. believe, yeah, thank you. Uh, Council Zondervan, you'd have to wait because Councilor McGovern still has the floor. He had yielded it to get a response, to, ask a qu uh, to respond to a question. He still has the floor and has not yielded it. Councilor McGovern. Thank you. Um, and I think part of those discussions, you know, if the chair sits down, we know 
that the manager is looking for two years, that could change. He could change his mind and want more, but we, at this point, uh, it's two years. And I don't think it will change, but it could. But part of those discussions would be, you know, if the manager said, I'm looking for a two-year extension and I want to be paid $500,000 a year, he would lay that all of that out to the chair who would then come back in executive session to the council to say, here's what he's looking for. All we know now is that he's looking for a two-year extension. We don't know if there's anything else he's asking for. That's when the negotiations begin because then we respond to what he has put out there. So I don't, you know, so I, I, I didn't think that your motion would preclude that initial conversation from happening, but I just didn't know what you were thinking um, in your motion. As far as the motion itself, um, I am fine with them doing an evaluation. I do want to, hearing what the chair has said, I do want a little more clarification about, um, I'm not ready to vote for that tonight, is what, is what I'm saying. But if we don't vote for it tonight, it would not preclude us from bringing something forward and, you know, in the near future to do that. So to, I just have a couple questions in my mind that I want to think about um, uh, in terms of process. I will say for the record that I, I think um, I, I agree with the chair that I think the ball was dropped, you know, um, last term on this. Um, but in how we proceed forward, I, I do want to think about that a little bit more. But I don't think an evaluation is is out of line or out of the question. So I probably will, I will not vote for your your amendment uh, or that motion today. But I would like to talk to you more about that and maybe thinking about how we can move forward on something in the near future. And thank you, uh, Councilor Madam Governor. Are you yielding the floor? Yes. Thank Councilor Zondervan, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I do first of all want to clarify that I, I have not read in the manager's letter that he's formally requesting a two-year extension. And so I believe that would be one of the clarifications that you would uh, obtain from him in your discussions as to the length of the extension. And I agree with my colleagues that the, we, we voted to authorize you to enter into conversation with him. I, I don't believe my colleague's motion would preclude or interfere with that uh, in any way. I also uh, believe that what the previous council did or didn't do isn't relevant. This current council is the one that has to decide on this contract extension or not, and not having a full evaluation of the manager uh, while doing that and negotiation I don't think is, is proper procedure. So um, I'm not sure if this is, if I need to do a formal amendment or or just um, offer a, a slightly more precise wording of the motion, which I would say is that the Government Operations Committee will conduct a full performance evaluation of the city manager prior to entering into negotiations around his request to extend his contract. And I would say that that um, evaluation process would happen after and in parallel to your conversations with the manager. I don't think that would preclude you from speaking with him tomorrow. Okay, thank you. Are you yielding the floor? Yes. Okay, thank you, Council Zondervan. So it, it sounds like to me, if I understand, you are putting in an amendment to Council Sabrina Wheeler's main motion. Um, so let me ask, is there any discussion on the amendment? Uh, Which you may have to restate uh, slowly, because it's, although you're audible, it's a little garbled. So please uh, slowly and succinctly restate your amendment to Councillor Sobrino Wheeler's main amendment, main motion. Councillor yes, Sardivan, you have the floor. Thank you. Yes, Madam Chair. The, um, I believe my colleague's motion was for the Government Operations Committee to have a meeting. Um, and so I'm offering amendment by substitution that says that we will conduct uh, a performance evaluation. So I will read it again more slowly. 
that the Government Operations Committee will conduct a full performance evaluation of the City Manager prior to entering into negotiations around his request to extend his contract. And I will also email a copy to the clerk. Thank you. Are there any questions? Does everyone understand what the motion is? And so what counselors, are you yielding the floor, Councilor Zondervan? Yes, Madam Chair. Okay. So Councilor Zondervan is trying to amend by substitution the order, a motion that says that the government ops will conduct a full performance evaluation. Is there any discussion? Yes, Madam Chair. Um, I, I can make a question about whether it can be an amendment or a separate motion. Uh, I'd like to see us leave this meeting uh, with some other meeting scheduled to evaluate the city manager's contract. I'm open if uh, we want to begin negotiations and uh, set that meeting you know, to, to later uh, to make a motion that uh, it, the evaluation would simply happen before we voted on the city manager's contract. I'm not sure if that's an amendment here or a separate motion, um, but we'd like to see us set a time for a meeting. At the last uh, government operations committee meeting, there was a lot of uh, discussion about having evaluation. We had uh, more counselors than we have tonight, including the, the mayor and the vice mayor who weren't uh, able to be here. Uh, I, I thought an evaluation would be the next step. I would like to see us get that on the books at, at this meeting, whether it's... So first, simulator. counselor, if I'm un understanding, we are talking about the amendment by substitution of Councilor Zondervan. And so in terms of precedent of motions, we would vote that one, not unless you're trying to now put another motion before his motion by substitution. So are, you already have a, if I understand the order, we now have the Council Zondervan's motion by substitution. We have your, your underlying order, which asks, I think, pretty much the same thing because um, I, I don't necessarily see the difference between the two. Uh, so I'm going to look to my clerk here because it would seem like now as you're going to rescind your main uh, motion to substitute it with this new one, and I'm not quite certain what the, what the order would be because we still have the underlying motion and then a motion by substitution of which you're now trying to amend can I make a quick point of order? Um, I'm willing to make it point as a, of information. a point of information. Thank you. Um, I'm willing to make it as a separate motion if that uh, makes things more simpler procedurally. So you would like at this time, now we are talking about a, a, a motion by substitution. You would not want to put a motion before that one that we vote that we have and evaluate because I, well, I am totally lost the sequence here. So if you can help me, Mr. Clark. If I may, through the chair, uh, Councillor Sabrina Wheeler made a motion, um, and this is what I have written down, so if, if I have any part of this incorrect, please correct me, Councillor. Uh, the motion was that the Government Operation Rules and Claims Committee meet to evaluate the performance of, city, of the city manager prior to entering into negotiations to extend the city manager's contract. Um, that is the main motion that's before the body, before any other motions aside from amendments can be um, uh, uh, evaluated or taken, that motion has to be um, uh, disposed of. Uh, and during the course of the discussion on Councillor Sabrina Wheeler's motion, Councillor Zondervan made a motion to amend uh, Councillor uh, Sabrina Wheeler's motion to state that the Government Operations Committee will conduct a full performance evaluation of the city manager prior to entering into negotiations around his request to extend his contract. Um, so the order of operations in this case is that the uh, committee will dispose of the um, uh, amendment and then will uh, dispose of the main motion before it can um, entertain any other motions. Madam Chair? Uh, Mr. Council's Honor, if you could hold just for a moment. Uh, to our clerk, so right now we're just voting for a the, the motion by substitution and the main motion, and if both of those fail, we go to the next one, or do we say if the, the, the vote by substitution fails and the main motion fails, doesn't fail, we still vote for something that's similar to? If the, uh, if the motion um, to substitute fails, then mm -hmm. the original language as proposed by Councilor Sabrina Wheeler will be before the body for the council to vote on. Mm -hmm. um, the council could um, then vote that motion up or down. Mm -hmm. if it, whether it passes or fails, um, the council could then entertain other motions um, should there be any. 
And I guess my question to you, because the motion by Council Sabrina Wheeler are very similar from what I can tell. It seems, and it may be just my understanding, they, they're very sure. similar. Councilor Zondervan, I still have the floor. I will recognize you shortly. Um, it just seems like they're very similar, but I'm going to follow your lead on that. Um, I didn't bring my copy Robert's rules with me, but um, under the rules, the chair has the discretion of determining if a motion is proper, if it is, um, it, that a motion is improper, if it is something that the body has already voted on. And that would be, so this is where I was kind of going. In my mind, Councilor Sabrina Wheeler, the motion that you elect to bring and the motion that you've already brought are very similar. It's almost to me like getting uh, two bites at the same apple. And what we by ruling, if if your main motion, the main motion were to fail, and then you were to try to bring that next motion in, I would, according to the clerk, because of what I feel is that they're so similar, that it would be an improper motion and would not bring it to the floor because I would rule that it was an improper motion because they're just too similar to me. So having said that, I do have your colleague waiting to be heard, after which if you'd like to speak, and then I think we should move on to the vote. Councillor Zanderman. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I, I do apologize. Uh, it's a little difficult to do this remotely. Um, and I apologize through you to my colleague as well um, for any confusion I'm causing. The, my, my main uh, intent of the amendment is that the Government Operations Committee would conduct an evaluation versus uh, the original motion, which says that the, operations, the Government Operations Committee would have a meeting to um, have an evaluation. So the difference being that the evaluation may or may not involve meeting, but it's focused on conducting an evaluation rather than um, just having a meeting to evaluate the city, manager, um, city manager's performance. So I see. Evaluation can be more expansive than, than just having a meeting. Okay. Thank you, Councillor uh, Zondran, for that clarification. I do have a better understanding. So what I would, if there's no further discussion, um, I would say this. Again, having had several conversations around this process, and the idea of the valuation, again, it is not best practice, it is not standard practice, and highly irregular that you would evaluate someone on their, at the time that they are asking for a two-year or a, a two-year extension, an extension, or a renewed contract. Although I do hear you very soundly, Council Sabrina Wheeler, that you've not had the opportunity to work with this, with this city manager, I, I do understand that. However, I don't think the sins of the father, in other words, the prior committee, should be visited on the next group that falls behind. I still say that it was something that we should have done that did happen in some matter, maybe not formal as people would wish. So what I would then suggest is to allow me as the chair to have a discussion with the city manager, because again, having talked to a number of people that have done this before, they have said that in terms of asking a candidate, uh, a sitting employee, to be evaluated on the heels of their contract renewal, whatever iteration, um, is has to be by mutual, at the minimum, by mutual consent. So this committee would have to vote perhaps to do that, and then the city manager would have to agree. So what I would then suggest, we can't go anywhere if we can't have a discussion to launch the discussion about, do you stay, do you go, how long do you want to stay, what do you want for me to come back and say, okay, committee, this is what the city manager, our current city manager is looking to achieve, after which this committee could say, based on what the city manager would like, this is what we'd like to see. And then you can go into negotiation, but we're trying to make something that doesn't, we don't have the framework yet, I'm trying to offer a framework, and so I'm not going to vote for either motion, I think we should go forward, have the discussion, and from that place, we now have a baseline from which to go forward. We will know what the city manager's intentions are, and then we can then discuss in executive session what we see as the places through which we 
what we want to see as a part of the conditions if we were to go for it. We are also past the two-hour limits, so, so to extend this meeting, I would have to have a vote because on our rules, so these meetings will not be more than two hours. So I'd like to entertain a motion to extend the meeting for 15 minutes. Is there a motion? Well, the, oh, that's right, roll call. Roll call. On extending the meeting for 15 minutes, Councillor McGovern. Yes. yes. Councillor Sabrina Wheeler. Yes. Yes. Councillor Toomey. Yes. Yes. Councillor Zondervan. Yes. Yes, Councillor Simmons. Yes. Motion passes five in favor, zero against. Thank you. So we, I, I would like the opportunity to then to go forward and call the question. Madam I Chair, do, I believe you said I you do. would recognize me after Councillor Zondervan. Okay, I will recognize you, then Councillor Toomey. I would hope that we can have a vote before the meeting expires. Right. Thank you. Councillor Sabrina Wheeler. I uh, take everything you say into to consideration, uh, and I'm willing to, to vote to move into discussion. I would just like to see us leave the meeting with an agreement for an evaluation uh, at some point in the future. I'm willing to amend my original motion to have that evaluation be before the council votes on the city manager's contract, if we want to start discussion. Um, I would just like to see us, we've, we've had two meetings now, talked a lot about evaluation. I'd like to see us leave this meeting with an agreement to have an evaluation before we vote on the final product of the city manager's contract. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Tumi. Uh, thank you, Madam Councilor, Chair. Do you yield the floor? Oh, sure. I do, thank you. Councillor Tumi. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just want to reemphasize just what you had just previously said, that you are going to have a conversation with the city manager to lay out the parameters, the framework of how we're going to move forward. And after your discussions, you will be coming back to the Government Operations Committee members and discussing what those parameters and the frameworks are. And that's, that would be the most appropriate time then to look at how we're going to move forward, which includes the uh, city manager evaluations. But until that conversation takes place between the chair, which is the most appropriate, of the Government Operations Committee, and I don't know why the previous Government Operations Committee didn't do the evaluation of the goals, but that's behind us. Um, but moving forward, you certainly have taken the lead to get this process moving the way it should uh, be moving. And so once we get those parameters, the framework, then all those discussions, after you share with the members of the committee, can then take place and we can do as many evaluations or whatever and things. But we have to first have that conversation then to allow that process to continue in the, the way it's supposed to be conducted and concluding evaluations. That's how we move forward. But until you have that, and the manager have that conversation, we're just spinning the wheels here. So I would move, um, move the question on the, um, on the, I don't know, there's two motions, the substitution motion. First. Motion by substitution and then, then the main motion. So I move. Move the question on that. So, uh, Council Toomey has moved the question. I was going to call for, yes, I will now call the roll. This is on the motion to move the question. If the motion to move the question passes, then we automatically move on to um, Councillor Zondervan's motion to amend. Councillor McGovern. No. This is a, do you know what you're voting for? <laughs> this motion. Councilor Toomey has moved to call the question. Oh, you oh, have oh, to oh. vote My on bad. a motion to okay. call so the question. To, okay, so, so a yes, yes would I vote mean... to call the question. Okay, thank you. Yes, Councilor Sabrina Wheeler. Yes. Yes, Councilor Toomey. Yes. Yes, Councilor Zondervan. Yes. Yes, Councilor Simmons. Yes. Yes, the motion passes five in favor, zero against. On Councilor Zondervan's motion to amend Councilor uh, Sabrina Wheeler's motion. Councillor McGovern. No. No. Councillor Sabrina Wheeler. Yes. Yes. Councillor Toomey. No. No. Councillor Zondervan. Yes. Yes. Councillor Simmons. No. No. The motion fails. Two in favor, three. I'm sorry. Two in favor, three against. On Councillor Sabrina Wheeler's motion, which I will restate just because it's been some time that the Government Operations Rules and Claims Committee meet to evaluate the performance of the city manager prior to entering into negotiations to extend the city manager's contract. Councillor McGovern. No. Madam Chair, no. I would like to make a motion to amend that motion. 
Can't do that? Nope. Okay. Councilor McGovern. No. No. Councilor Sabrina Wheeler. Yes. Yes. Councilor Toomey. No. No. Councilor Zondervan. Yes. Yes. Councilor Simmons. No. No. The motion fails. Two in favor, three against. Having taken care of the business of this meeting, I would like to entertain a motion for the committee to adjourn. Do I have a motion? On a motion by Councilor Toomey to adjourn, roll call. On a motion to adjourn, Councilor McGovern. Yes. Yes, Councilor Sabrina Wheeler. Yes. Yes, Councilor Toomey. Yes. yes, Councilor Zondervan. Yes. Yes, Councilor Simmons. Yes. Motion passes five in favor, zero against. This meeting is adjourned. Is leaving the